Okay, so again, I'm John Meyerhofer, and I lead the business standards team at SAP, and I want to say thank you to all of you who must be highly interested in this topic as opposed to going to lunch. And that's a true show of interest. And so I hope we can, as a panel, not disappoint you here. Um, I'm going to just give you a few words on um, who SAP is as context for why we care about open social. So SAP is focused on business applications. We are the number one business applications provider in the world. Uh, our customers represent the output of about 50% of the world's gross domestic product. So we have a pretty big footprint. I'd say more importantly, we touch the lives of everyone in this room. So we help power 75% of the world's beer production. We help power 65% of the world's chocolate production. Uh, if you guys have bought a song on iTunes recently, you touch an SAP system. Because we sell things that are from the core, like general ledger, um, human capital management, uh, master data management, to, uh, to business intelligence software, we touch everything. Because we do that, we have a great opportunity to bake in processes and to enable processes that help our customers run more sustainable businesses. And that's a great opportunity and a responsibility that we take very seriously. So why do we care about open social? Well, we enable business processes, software, business applications, model and enable business processes which power business networks. Business networks consist of people and other entities. The relationship between people has been important in business since the beginning of time. Many of the business processes that we enable can benefit greatly by providing the full benefit of those relationships between people and the relationships between people and other entities like the processes themselves or companies or groups, for example. So this is why we care about open social. Um, I'm going to show you briefly uh, one component, one tiny component of SAP's social composite. Uh, this is not actually a product yet, uh, although it's being used internally by our employees at SAP. It's called the Relationship Analysis Server. Um, the Relationship Analysis Server enables you to gather in data from multiple sources. It could be an exchange server, for example. It could be a, an HR system or a CRM system or many other sources. And it enables you to define and divine the relationships between these entities. This thing is accessible via a RESTful API. Any of you guys can download the server and write apps against it, by the way, and I'll show you where to do that in just a moment. And we've written an app against it called the Social Network Analyzer. And I'm going to go and change my identity for this demo. So I'm no longer John Meyerhofer of SAP. I am now uh, Nicholas Cox, a collections manager in a mid-sized software company. And it, what you see here is how to access the Social Network Analyzer if you want to download it or play with it online. This sample data that I'm about to show you is accessible on demand. So um, feel free to go here afterwards. Uh, this, this site, by the way, is our equivalent of Google Labs. So um, this is our kind of labs area for business intelligence software. So in the course of my job, in the flow, in the context of my job as a collections agent, I get an invoice. I try to collect on this invoice. For some reason, it's overdue. In this case, Calex, the customer, they're a big customer. They're a good customer. They usually pay on time. There's something wrong. But for the last three weeks, they haven't been returning my phone calls. And so I want to use the relationship or the social network analyzer here, which can be in the flow of my SAP system to do my job and collect on this invoice. What you see here on the right, this view, is the profile panel. Nicholas Cox is the user, and Nicholas's profile is aggregated from multiple systems, in this case, HR system and a project system. In the middle is the entity pane. These are all the entities that Nicholas has access to. And on the left, you see a search bar and faceted browsing, using the two in conjunction to get, the, um, to, get to where you want to go. So if I click on one of Nicholas's profile elements, Palo Alto, I will see all the people or all the entities that are associated with Palo Alto, 33 out of 63. If I want to see all developers in Palo Alto, 
I can, I can do that. But back to my job collecting on this invoice. So I'm going to search on Calix. Yep, Ursula Minobel is the contact from Calix. A lot of her profile comes from our CRM system. I'm going to explore Ursula's connections to my company. So I see here there's multiple different types of relationships. You can define relationships such as is a member of. In this case, we're looking at is a member of types of relationships. And Ursula is a member of these groups. We could also um, have, instead of the Ursula Nobel entity, we could also have the entity Apple and show the connections to all the products that Apple has bought from our company, for example. In this case, though, this is good enough. Ursula Nobel is a member of multiple groups, so likely if I go to the Connect tab, it's going to be easy to calculate the shortest path to Ursula. This is what it's all about. It's the shortest path to Ursula who is not paying her invoice. So I, Nicholas Cox, am related to Ursula through three or four steps. The relationships are I report to Marge Collins, the CFO. Marge is a member of the sales, sales steering committee. And Ursula is also a member of the sales steering committee. So Marge and executive sits together with Ursula. The odds are if I throw both Marge and Ursula on a clipboard, and initiate an action to both of them. So here it says send email. I could easily say initiate conference call or initiate an Adobe Connect session. Um, it could be trigger, trigger an alert to an ERP system. Anyway, I click on that. I get an email triggered to both these people. And now Ursula is bound to get back to me because she doesn't want to embarrass herself in front of her executive friend on the uh, sales steering committee. This app also runs on an iPhone. So, and um, I'm told by our business innovation people that it will be running on an Android system in the not too distant future. So this is just one small aspect of what we're doing to work in the social component of, um, of business and enable the social component with the best available technology. So SAP and open social. SAP is a supporter. We believe that the concepts behind open social are, um, are going to make the lives of our customers better. We believe that the standard is viable. It's you know, out of the gate. And we would like to work together with colleagues here on this panel, um, as well as other enterprise companies and the broader open social community to help, um, to help modify and evolve the standard so that it, it actually meets the needs of enterprise customers. And this is a pretty big population with a pretty big impact. So um, if you have any questions, I, I think I'm done.